human memory can be divided into three distinct systems. These three systems are called episodic memory, semantic memory, and procedural memory. Episodic memory is our childhood memories, our memories of different events, the memory of what happened yesterday, my first day at school, and so many different memories of events, circumstances, situations, experience. Semantic memory, things that I have learned, facts that I have learned. So for example, the capital of United States of America is Washington DC, is something in my semantic memory. But when I visited Washington DC and what I did there is part of my episodic memory. And before I talk about procedural memory, I will ask you a question. Have you ever wondered when you're watching an Indian or a Pakistani movie, hero gets hit on the head and he forgets everything. He forgets the heroine, he forgets his own parents, he forgets his own friends, and he looks at them and he says, who are you? Where am I? What is this place? But he does not forget how to button or unbutton his shirt. He does not forget how to comb his hair. He does not forget how to put on or take off clothes. So how is it that being hit on the head affects one kind of memory and not another kind of memory? But whatever we are depicting in the movies is actually correct. People who have suffered from amnesia due to head injury typically forget episodic memory. They lose a lot of personal memory of events, of people, of places. But they do not forget how to button their shirts or how to tie their shoelaces. So this particular memory or procedural memory is something that stays with us. The evidence has usually come from cases of amnesia. Similarly, there were studies of taxi drivers in London who are highly specialized in their knowledge of different locations and how to get there. They know all the shortcuts to take during rush hours. They know when to enter into the bus lane. They know what routes to avoid and what routes to adopt. So they're very, very highly specialized. When their brain functioning was examined for this procedural memory, we found that the brains took different pathways than it did for episodic memory or even for semantic memory. So there is a great deal of evidence to suggest that these three different memory systems have different neural correlates. There are different sets of neurons specializing in each different category. Let me give you another example. You've forgotten where you put the keys to the car. So you're about to leave home and you're looking all over the place for the keys. And suddenly you remember you put them in the drawer. Usually you do not put your keys in the drawer. So you go there and you take them out. These kinds of events may happen almost every day. They may happen once a week. They may happen once a month, but they do happen. But does it ever happen that once having learned how to tie your shoelaces, you forget about it? Just the other day, I decided to ride a bicycle. The last time I rode a bicycle was at the age of 18. But I was surprised at how easy it was for me to climb the bicycle and ride it, as if I had done it every day. So once learned, a skill is likely to continue in our memory. The memory for facts and events may be lost. So while riding the bicycle was something that I have never really forgotten, I was surprised that my knowledge of capitals of the world has deteriorated quite a bit. As a child, I had memorized nearly 150 capitals of 150 different countries. And yesterday, when I looked at the world map, I realized that there were about 30 countries for which I did not remember the capital. In some cases, the capital had changed, to be fair, but in many cases, they had not. If you examine your own episodic memory, semantic memory, and procedural memory, chances are that you'll find difference. Chances are that you would be better, much better, at procedural memory than you would be at semantic memory or episodic memory.